Hi, welcome to MCC Connects. I'm Mary Jo Griffin. Well, it's springtime, and you know what that means, spring break. And we've all been exposed to and heard of the crazy spring breaks that so many college students take going south to the beaches and those wild parties. Well, I am proud to say that our students here at Middlesex Community College have chosen alternative spring breaks. In today's program, we're going to hear about three different alternative spring breaks that the Middlesex Community College students chose to take, where they were educated, where they engaged in civil responsibility and social responsibility and learning. So our first guests today are Bruna Fernandez and Teresa Gray. Thank you so much for joining me. And you chose to go to our <coughs> nation's capital, Washington, D.C., on your spring break. And I want to commend you on that because one of the main reasons for going to the capital, going to Washington, D.C., was to present the Veteran History yes. Project tapes. And Teresa, I know you were one of the veterans that was interviewed. Mm -hmm. um, Miriam Mungavin really spearheaded that whole project. And just so our viewers know, we did do a segment on it, um, the Veterans History Project, which Middlesex Community College is working on, where the Library of Congress is collecting video of veterans, yes. and we are working on those at Middlesex Community College. Well, today. the Veterans History Project is really an acknowledgement that we have over 20 million veterans who have served uh, in so many of our conflicts across the globe that they have tremendous stories to tell that they're part of our nation's history, but that all too often we're simply not getting those stories in a way that allows us to protect them for What, how, what he thinks of war, uh, just get a better feel for uh, his experiences, but also how he looks at us as a country today as a result of them. And so this is really an acknowledgement that President Clinton signed the legislation into law that created the Veterans History Project in 2000, really a recognition that we were losing all these stories. We needed to find a way uh, to protect them both for family members who may you know, at some point in life want to know more about their relatives' experiences, but also uh, to document them for the sake of our country's history. So there we are scuttling through the, uh, I forget, what, the bowels, that's what I called it, we're in the bowels of the Capitol <laughs> and the Library of Congress. And we're running and we get there on time and we got to present the tapes and that was just, I was so proud of myself finally having an opportunity because Marianne and Pat had such a heck of a time talking me into doing it in the first place. How many students participated in it? There was 25 students and three faculty. So what was that like to travel with 25 students? It was Particularly, I mean, you're not a, you're not a traditional student. No. So you, got, you were <laughs> merged into probably 24 other college students. Yes, that like? I felt kind of, at first I felt like, oh no, I'm the old lady of the bunch. <laughs> but the, it was the most incredible bunch of students I ever came across. How long was the bus ride? Eight hours. Eight hours, was which eight. usually it's like a nine, ten hour drive. We got there like six in the morning, so everyone woke up and everyone was excited to get out of the bus because we've been there for so long. And then we went to get breakfast and clean up a little. And then by 8 o'clock, we're in the bus again and going. And then that was it. We were on the run from then on. We stopped and met our tour guide, whose name was Omi. Omi, yeah. She was, was she German? I think it's, so, yes, I she was. I think so. She had the cutest accent. She was 68 years old, and I'm telling you right now, she could outrun every one oh, of these yes. kids. Oh, yes. Not to mention me, who was <laughs> hobbling along on the cane. But she was unbelievable. She, we would have never saw what we saw in 72 hours without her. So what was the first place you saw? The Vietnam Memorial, oh. which was intense, especially for me, because I'm more of that age group. And my brother had a really good friend who went over there in November of six, well, he enlisted in November of 68, and we lost him in February of 69. So I still get chills when I think about it. And he wanted me to find his name and rub it. And being as short as I am, I was not, I could barely reach his name and instantly. This is what I'm talking about with the camaraderie of all these students. They were just amazing. Instantly, they all saw I was having trouble and like 10 of them just, Teresa, can we help you? And they ended up doing the rubbing for me. Mm -hmm. 
and I have pictures of just their arms rubbing his name. <coughs> and I was able to frame that and give it to my brother. Well, Teresa G Gray yes. and Bruno Fernandez, thank you so much for taking the time to come to MCC Connects today and talk about your spring break to Washington, D.C. Thank you thank for you having us, Mary Jo. Thank you. We're going to take a short break. Stay tuned for the next segment of MCC Connects.